Hello. Um, our data is important. And uh, we want to make sure it's safe and protected from failures. Those could be hardware failures from disk to hosts and software bugs and even in environment failures. In today's session, I'm going to go over the, the different features OpenShift Container Storage has for data resilience. My name is Oit Wasserman. I'm OpenShift Container Storage Architect at Red Hat. I've been working and developing for storage for quite a while. Uh, some of you may know me from a previous role at Red Hat where I was Ceph RTW Core developer working on Ceph object storage. We'll go over a bit what is OpenShift Container Storage and Ceph, discuss our backup, our high availability features, and finish with disaster recovery, making sure our data is protected from the total data center loss. OpenShift Container Storage, or OCS for short, because it's a very long name. Uh, we provide persistent data services for OpenShift application, containers application. OpenShift is Red Hat Platform as a service uh, based on Kubernetes offering. And, and we run wherever OpenShift run, basically on all the hybrid cloud, from public cloud like AWS and Azure, to on-premise virtualized environment like VMware and OpenStack to on-parameter installation. We're completely integrated with OpenShift. We even sync our release cycles. We are an operator and we use the operator framework for packaging, deployment, and management. Our underlying storage is safe. And another important part is Rook. Rook is a CNCF graduated project. He allows us to uh, deploy, maintain, and administrate in Ceph in a Kubernetes environment. And we also have a multi-cloud gateway uh, providing multi-cloud object storage uh, provided by Numa. Ceph is an open source project. Uh, it's my favorite project. <laughs> it's a software defined storage which meaning it's a software only solution and it runs on any commodity hardware, commodity servers, standard x86 servers, ARM, Power, and even mainframe, standard IP network, TCP IP or RDMA, and standard disk, hard disk, SSDs, and NVMEs, and so on. We take all those unreliable commodity hardware and create a very reliable storage cluster. This in, the, in a single storage cluster, we provide object storage, block storage with RBD, and distributed file system with CFFS. Ceph is very highly available and very resilient. Uh, we, it includes self healing to, to automatically uh, protect the data in case of a failure. It's very, very scalable tens of beta and, and it's very elastic. You can actually expand the cluster very easily when everything is uh, running uh, and without any effect on your workload. As we are going to talk a bit uh, on OCS and we are integrated with Ceph, uh, we, I'm going to discuss two important components of Ceph. There are others, but those are what I'm going to discuss today. So we have the monitor. The monitor is basically our cluster manager. He has the cluster view and state. He is the central authority for authentication and placement and policy. And all the other cluster component get the cluster state from the monitors. To be highly available, we have several monitors in a cluster, three, five, or seven. It's always an odd number. So we have a quorum, a majority in case of a failure. The monitor communicates between the cells with Paxos, a consensus uh, protocol, it's quite famous. Um, this is a Ceph, or Ceph implements its own Paxos, but you're probably familiar with RAF, which is another Paxos implementation in Go that is used in Kubernetes. Then we have the OSDs, object storage demand. We have tens to 10,000 OSD per cluster. 
basically an OSD per disk. In some cases, when the disks are really large, you can partition the disk and the OSD can serve a partition of the disk. The OSD they provide uh, all the I.O. to the clients and all the data path goes through the OSDs. Where the OSD communicated between the self with a specific self peer-to-peer -peer protocol. They are handling the data replication, making sure we have enough copies of the data to be resilient to failure. They handle failures and move the data in case of OSD failure. And when you expand the cluster, they, are, they rebalance the data, make sure we use all the OSDs in the system. So first of all, uh, we want to protect the data from uh, accidents. Accident can happen when you delete by mistake your data, which happens to me. <laughs> or when the data is actually corrupted, or when the, the hardware can also cause some corruptions. Backup is infrequent. We do it usually once a day, like nightly, or maybe even once a week. It could be several times a week. The restore is manual, meaning when something bad has happened, I may ask the admin to restore my data, or maybe I'll have an API, but it will take time. The data is, it has to be stored remotely, so it won't be affected what's going on in the system. From my experience, it's very important to check your backup. Make sure it's functional. Still remember, and the start of our work, we came on Sunday. In Israel, we start working on Sunday. And we found out we had a power loss during the weekend, and we lost all our storage. And then, to make things much more complicated, we found out the backup wasn't running for the last two months. We actually could not restore all the data. So please check your backup. OCS backup is based on incremental snapshot. We take a point in time co uh, copy of your data and, it only, and only store what changed from the previous snapshot. This reduces our space usage. These snapshots are, co are copied to an external object storage. It could be public cloud object storage, or it could be uh, another OCS. And this is also good for archiving. We have a new community operator called OADP, OpenShift API for data protection. This operator provides API for the backup solution to integrate with OCS. OCS provide the storage function and the backup solution provide the backup scheduling, management, policies. We use Valero Community Operator provided by VMware. So thank you, VMware. We have already did the integration with IBM Spectrum Protect, Trilio Custom, and, and many more common backup solutions. So backup is great, but it's very infrequent and it's very manual. We want a way to protect the data and make sure it will be available in case of failure. Here comes the high availability features of OCS. When this, we discuss high availability, we also discuss our fellow domain. What section of the infrastructure we can lose and still be functioning? In storage system, usually the lowest unit is disk. Here, safe replication saves us from a disk failure. Set makes sure that each replica of our data is stored in a separate disk. So in case we lose a disk, we, if you use, for example, rep replica free, we'll have two copies of the data and we are still resilient and can function and update the data. The, the next fellow domain is host when you lose we want to be able to function when we lose a host, a server. This is the default fellow domain for Ceph. So Ceph makes sure not only each replica is in a different disk, but it's in a different disk in a different host. Again, when we lose a host, we still have two copies in two other hosts and the data is safe. We can also provide a REC fellow domain. In this case, you need to have at least three RECs. And then we'll make sure that each replica is in a different host in a different way. Again, we are safe. 
Next, but sometimes we want even higher protection. An ability zone is a fault isolation section of your data center. In AWS, for example, you have at least three ability zones in a region. Each ability zone will have its own power source. So in case we'll have a power failure, only one ability zone will be affected. The same with networking and other infrastructure. In the next few slides, I'm going to discuss more about uh, OCS ability zone protection. And in the disaster recovery section, I'm going to discuss what we do in the even higher fellow domain of a data center. So the classical setup is when we have free ability zone. This is OpenShift and OCS default installation when we are installed in a, in a public cloud, when we always have free ability zones. And a fellow domain here is an ability zones. So OpenShift makes sure that each of its master nodes is in a different zone. And OCS makes sure that this is each self monitor is deployed in a different zone. So in case of a zone failure, OpenShift will have still still have two master and can completely function as regular. And Ceph will have two monitor and continue to function as usual. OpenShift, in addition, can provide you uh, your application high availability and make sure your pods are, are moved to different ability zones. But if your application uses persistent data, you need to make sure that that data is available in those zones. EPS, for example, is limited to a single availability zone, meaning that if you lose a zone, and you move to an application runs in a different zone, it won't be able to no longer use the EBS volume. OCS, on the other hand, provide, provide you multi-zone access, and we make sure that each replica of your data is in a different zone. So in case you lose a zone, you still have to, two copies of your data you can use and access from any running zone, and you are safe from failure. This is done by the sex synchronous application. So there's no data loss. Everything is automatic with the failover and also the recovery. But on premise, we don't always have free availability zone. In many cases, we have only two. This is a new in OCS 4.7 and in Safe Octopus, we have the Arbiter cluster. We have a new kind of monitor, the Arbiter. Its main job is to allow us to have a quorum in case of a zone failure, to still have majority. It doesn't communicate with the OSD like the regular monitors. If we look at our setup, we have two ability zones. We call them data zone as the OSD only run, are running in those zones. And then we'll have the arbiter in somewhere, somewhere else. If it's a Ceph deployment, the arbiter can even run in the public cloud. If it's an open shift, then uh, we are still limited by the requirement for network latency that open shift needs. Each OSD in its data zone only communicates with the monitor running in that zone. So it won't be affected from its own failure. Because of that, we, we decided to use five monitors in our deployment when we deploy in, in Arbiter mode. I like the three because when uh, we lose a zone, we, wa we, we want to have more than a single monitor, so it will be highly available. So with four regular monitor and the Arbiter, we're going to be left with two functioning monitor and one Arbiter to have the, the quote. Replica free, for example, here won't work because it's odd and it doesn't divide in two. If we have chosen to use Replica 2, what will happen when we lose a zone is that we'll be left with a single copy of the data. It's very risky to allow updating the data when you only have a single copy because we do expect in large cluster there will be additional faults. So we are enforcing Replica free. You keep two copies in each data zone. So when you lose a zone, you have two copies of your data and it's the data is resilient. But what, so we are protected from a ability zone failure, 
But what shall we do when we lose all our data center? For that, we have disaster recovery. Disaster recovery will provide us fellow domain of data center when we lose a full, full data center or site or, in a, or a region in AWS. Our recovery sites needs to be remote, so it won't be affected. For example, if it's a natural disaster or a flood, or maybe a statewide power loss that happened in Texas this week. So it has to be remote. The fact it's remote will mean we have high network latency. So here we cannot use synchronous replication. And so we are going to use asynchronous replication. We are, gonna, we, are play, we are using RBD async snap mirroring. This is new in Ceph Octopus. Uh, a previous uh, mirroring for RBD is, was journal based and was only available when you use in LibRBD. Uh, we in OCS use the kernel RBD client KRBD, so we can only use the snap mirroring. Another benefit is that it's snapshot based and not journal, so it doesn't affect uh, the load of the clusters. We have a new RBD daemon in each cluster. Uh, it's snapshot based, so uh, the daemon in uh, the primary cluster, cluster A, A, will take the snapshot in the interval you configure. Then the secondary cluster, cluster B, will pull the snapshot and make sure its uh, volume data is up to date. We support failover when cluster A for some reason is down, cluster B can become now primary and serve the data. We think cluster A is back. It needs to sync the data that was updated when it's done. And then we say, then fell back. Cluster A is completely synced and it can serve again as primary. You can have enable mirroring per volume and you can also set the snapshot interval per volume. So let's look how it goes together with OCS. So we have two data centers that are connected with a slow network on the one. The first cluster, the first site, the OpenShift cluster that is active, your application are running, they have their own persistent volume that is serving and they are writing to them. Then we have the other data center, a different OpenShift cluster running OCS. This is the standby cluster. Here the application is not running and the persistent volumes are replicated to this cluster, but they are not active. You cannot write to them. In case of disaster, we'll promote the second cluster too and make it active, and only then you could use the PVs in that cluster. The PVs are replicated using the Ceph RBD snap mirroring, and you can even set the interval for the snapshot depending on your network bandwidth and your uh, rate of data change. This is tech preview in OCS 4.7. What else is coming for OCS DR? So first of all, uh, we believe in OCS on ease of use to making the, the user life easier. So uh, the current implementation is very CLI driven. So first of all, we are gonna add your user interface. We'll add more automation, so so you so many operations will happen automatic and won't require manual intervention. The current granularity is per PV. Uh, we will to provide higher granularity per OpenShift dev space or level. As you notice, I discussed only RBD, only the block uh, storage. We, we want also CFFA support that's coming in the next set release specific, and then it will come to OCS in the version probably 4.9. We are working on improving our performance, but by looking at compressing the network and increasing our scalability, the number of concurrent PVs we can replicate. In DR, it's not enough to only make sure the data is replicated. The application configuration state also need to be handled. Uh, this is won't be handled by OCS, but by a different operator. We are working on a new operator called Remen. 
and hopefully in next DevCon, I could present you Raman and how it works with all the stack. So, uh, so we discussed today the, the different data resilient method OCS has. We started with backup APIs, then we moved to high availability with free availability zones and two availability zones, which we call the Arbiter. You can protect your data from data center failure using our DR feature with RBD snap mirroring, and lots more is coming in the future. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions if anyone has. All right, we have a uh, question from Sean here. So Sean mentions, will destination PVs replicated during RBD mirroring get the same name. So yeah. we'll be able to use them seamlessly in the destination deployments that are deployed using Argo CD or ACM. So the answer is yes. Uh, we are going to skip the PV names. So you don't need to change your application configuration. And uh, we are actually doing integration with the uh, ACM. This is Raman. And, all, and maybe also a GitOps model. Uh, we have not finalized the design yet so far, man. So that's it's still working for this. Thanks, Audit, for answering this question. Uh, so I have another question. Uh, Mirik says, uh, does the snapshot mirroring work for both file and block storage the same way? Well, we, in the current implementation, we only have block uh, and the CFS work is still uh, in progress, but yes, it's, it's snapshot based. So it's basically similar, but for file system. Uh, sure, I think or we have a couple minutes left. So I think we can take one or two more questions. Ah, okay. Yeah, so another question is from Tom and he, asks, what's the difference between Nuba and Rook provided buckets? OCS is providing multiple storage classes to choose from, and it's confusing to him. Um, so uh, Nuba provides object storage, and uh, you can roll and um, so basically for object storage, we don't use storage classes. It's not CSI. Uh, you can use OBC object bucket claims, so it's a similar mechanism, or you can use regular S3 protocol in your application. And uh, for a persistent volume, you use CSI, and then you have storage classes. Could be uh, read-write-only storage classes, usually are backed by RBD with either, it could be a Roblox or a local file system, depending on what storage class, uh, or it could be a safe so the first storage class is usually right with many as it's a shared file system and you want to share the data between the different PVs. I hope that answered my, the question. Sorry, we have, yeah. We have one more from Tomas and he asks, does OCS support RWX volumes for OSP? Because AWS volumes do not as far as he as far as we, he understands that only NFS supports are RWX. So CFS uh, PVs are RWX. Uh, we actually for uh, OpenShift virtualization, Kubit, and uh, we support also RBD PVs that are read by many um, for live migration, but only for Kubit because for block it's not good to do sharing. And ah, I see Tom, Tom, I didn't answer your question about the storage class. So, so Rook and Nuba uh, buckets um, are a bit different because Nuba is a multi-cloud gateway. So you can actually have a bucket that is on AWS and a bucket is that is on Azure and you can access it both through Nuba. Rook usually provide buckets that are backed by RGW, Ceph object storage. So it's usually only uh, those buckets. Uh, 
if you, for example, install a CS on bare metal, so you can actually have buckets that are backed by a GW, and you can access either directly without GW or the or Funuba, and then get the multi-cloud options. For example, share bare metal with the AWS.